Hello there. For some reason, while I was holding the title card up in front of me and I couldn't see the camera, I remembered Hector Sandoval from the Miami Vice episode, Free Verse. And they transport him from the safe house to this award ceremony that he insists on going to, even though the death squads in his country, Latin American poet, he was, even though the death squads are out to get him. And so they have him lie down in the back seat and they put a heavy blanket over him, sleeping bag, something. And then they wheel him into the affair in his wheelchair because he can't walk. And he's got this thing still on him. He's covered to the shoulders. And somebody, I think it's Rico Tubbs, reaches to remove it. And he says, no, I want to make a grand revelation. He was a uh, pompous old boy. But that's what I thought of when, when I had that in front of me. I made a grand revelation. Yes, my mind is weird. If you, if you don't know that, you haven't been watching these videos too awful long. Today, though, or on the, in this video, I've made half a dozen, I think, so far today. And then I have another channel, Christianity on the Bottom Shelf, that I need to make a bunch of videos for today as well. But right now, what I want to talk about is the fact that everybody's palate is different. One of the questions that comes up with uh, people who are new to whiskey, excuse me, is how can I learn to taste all these things that y'all are getting from, from a, a glass of whiskey? Well, it's the same as the answer to the question, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. That joke was old when I was yay high. How high is yay high? You can't see everything. That's, that's an interesting thing about a camera. You can see what's behind me. You can't see what's over there. You can't see what's over, well, to an extent you can. You can't see what's in front of me. A, with a camera only allows you to see certain things. And so you might look at a picture of a meadow and say, man, out in the wilderness and behind is 23 apartment buildings. Cameras can deceive. Well, the way people use cameras can de be deceiving. But anyway, yay high, however high that is. And I don't remember where I was going with that yay high bit. But, uh, Oh, the joke. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? And that brings me back to what I was saying. How do you learn to detect various things in whiskey? Practice, practice, practice. When I first started, all I could tell was that whiskey tasted like whiskey and didn't taste like paint thinner, which is why I'm here today. If it had tasted nasty, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be drinking whiskey, much less running a channel about it. But nevertheless, everybody's palate is different. Let me take, well, I don't have the bottle here and I'm not going to run and get it. Although it's tempting to say, bye, I'll be back, but I won't. Dickel, I have a bottle of Dickel signature recipe in there. Uh, what the bottle used to say, number 12, that's how I still think about it. I just the other day realized, wait a minute, it doesn't say number 12 on there. But a lot of people, when they nose in the whiskey and when they taste it, they get a Flintstones vitamin note and they don't like it. Now, I, I always liked the chewable vitamins. Tasted like candy, but it kind of like sweet tarts. But I don't get that. I do get pecans. And I've never heard anybody else talk about pecans in Dickel whiskey, but I get pecans. There are people who can tell you almost every time if a whiskey comes from Jim Beam because they get a nuttiness on the nose. I don't. I, what Jim Beam whiskey I've had did not give me a nutty note. But Heaven Hill whiskey... 
gives me a distinct odor of peanut shells, and other people don't get that. My palate is my palate. Randy Sullivan's palate on Bourbon Real Talk, and these are all channels on YouTube that I'm naming, his palate is his palate. On SLB Drinks, Kurt's palate is Kurt's palate. Trenton's palate is Trenton's palate. You go to It's Bourbon Night. Chad and Sarah have individual palates. You go to Steph and Whiskey. Josh and Aaron have set, uh, individual palates. You go to Beautiful Bourbon. KC, who is the most hilarious dude you'll ever find. If you don't check out any of these other channels, go check out Beautiful Bourbon. The dude is crazy. He's crazier than I am, and that's saying something. Well, maybe as crazy. But I don't have a gorgeous ice sphere. And he does, so he has the advantage. <laughs> Go watch him. But he has an individual palate. Now, from what I can tell, and it can be difficult because what I can afford and what I see are different from what they can afford and what they see. For instance, KC, Beautiful Bourbon. He just finished a, a series on the various benchmark expressions. I've never seen a bottle of benchmark in my life. Well, I've been drinking whiskey now quite three years. Wow, in you know, all my life. <laughs> that makes no sense when you think about it. But I can't find benchmark. He can. So I can't guarantee that I will have the same opinion of, say, benchmark foolproof that he does. I want to find him. Now, I'm leery of the Buffalo Trace Distillery, and here's another example of, of individual palates. I'm leery of the Buffalo Trace Distillery because of all their stuff that I've had. There's only one thing that I really like, and that's the Blanton's Straight from the Barrel, which is sky high out of my price range, and I couldn't find it anyways. I'm going to exercise my individual palate here. Please pardon me. Fine whiskey. Balconis Lineage Sing Texas Single Malt, except in American English, it's barley whiskey, sprouted barley whiskey. Individual palate. I like most of what I've had from Balconis. I think they make the best whiskey on earth. It's my favorite distillery. There are other people who dislike it so much, they become abusive, they rant and they rave and they use bad language. There was one guy on MeWe who blocked me because I would not agree with him that Balconis, Texas, uh, uh, pot still bourbon was a one note whiskey. I didn't think so then. I don't think so now. I'm still sorting out all the notes that are in it. But he was so mad that I didn't agree with him that he blocked me. And unfortunately, he died with me still blocked, so we were never able to patch things up, which I wanted to do. He's the first person who ever sent me samples. His name was Gary Johnson. If I'm, I know it was Gary. I believe it was Johnson. He's been dead a few months now, and I have a, a memory like a steel sieve. But I never wanted to have him mad at me. I was never mad at him. But his palate and mine were different. And Balconis, for some reason, is so polarizing that people get mad if you like it and they don't. Don't ask me why somebody would get mad. Nobody gets mad if you like Knob Crick and they don't. They don't get mad at you. If you like Larceny and they don't, they don't get mad at you. If you like something from Balconis and they don't, they will cuss you. I've seen it. Don't ask me why. But Balconis is like that. But the whole point of all this anecdotal stuff I've been saying is that every palate is different. If we both had a glass of this, we might get a lot of the same note. I suspect you'd get the oak like I get. This is a nice oaky finish. It, it lasts and lasts, the oak does. But would you get the same fruity notes that I do? Would you get the tropical 
fruits, the mangoes and the bananas and such, would you get the impression that this fruit is all covered in chocolate? You might not. You might not even like it, whereas I love it. Or we go to Knob Crick. Some people don't like Knob Crick because their palate prefers something lighter, something brighter. I like a dark whiskey. I like something a little heavier, which is one of the reasons why I don't often drink Scottish and Irish whiskey. That's what I go to when I want something lighter. Or Mellow Corn. There are people who rave about Mellow Corn. And there are people who rave against mellow corn. I'm in the middle. I like it, but I don't think it's great whiskey. It's good whiskey, and it's certainly affordable. But everybody's palate is different, and so they react differently to mellow corn. And by the way, I did a video on, on terminology and the way people talk, and, and I, I ranted about be an individual, be yourself. Here's another aspect of that. Why do you, why does everybody say mellow corn instead of mellow corn? You know, you wouldn't say a red Ford. You'd say a red Ford. You don't say a tall building. You say a tall building. So why is the emphasis on the first word in mellow corn instead of mellow corn? Or single malt. If you got, if you just absolutely can't think of any other way to say it, then, and you have to say single malt, why are you saying single malt? For one thing, it's one word. For another thing, the emphasis should be on the second word, single malt, not single malt. But that is off the subject entirely. Can you tell this is a thoroughly amateur production? Anyways. Every palate is different. So if you're new to whiskey, I've done a video on how you can learn to taste whiskey. And I believe I said there that you have to practice, practice, practice. But as your palate develops, you're going to find that you'll get some of the same notes on a given whiskey that other people do. and you, But the other notes they get, you won't get. And there are notes you get that they won't get. Most reviewers never mention butter. I fairly often get butter from whiskey. Honey comes up fairly often. I get it a lot. I get the peanut shell note on the nose of stuff from Heaven Hill. Nobody else does as far as I can tell. People get nuttiness from Jim Beam juice. I don't. Every palate is different, yours included. So if you're not getting exactly the same thing that I get, or that Randy Sullivan gets, or that Trenton and Kurt get, or Casey gets, don't worry about it. Maybe you will someday, and maybe you won't, but you'll get what you get. You'll enjoy what you enjoy. And on that note, I'll end the video by telling you two things. And they both convey the same message. When I was brand new to whiskey, in the whiskey group on MeWe, my concho, and if that's really his name, it is the coolest name, my concho told me, if you like it, it's good whiskey. And then before business considerations required them to separate their channels, Daniel Whittington and Rex Williams on both the Whiskey Tribe and the Whiskey Vault said multiple times, the best whiskey is the whiskey you like, the way you like to drink it. So whatever your palate gives you, if you don't like this particular whiskey, you don't have to drink it and you don't have to pretend you like it. And if this, you do like this other whiskey, then you should drink it, even if nobody else on earth likes it. Your palate is your palate. Your whiskey is your whiskey. Your enjoyment is your enjoyment. Don't let anybody tell you different. On that note, here's how.